from this. So there is a lot of different virus that we, most of us carry, like herpes. Once you've had chicken pox, you have herpes in your system. And there might be others that are dormant and they are totally dependent on your gut flora. Genetic expression, plant-based diets positively influence gene expression, reducing the risk of chronic disease. Epigenetic changes from plant-based nutrition have lasting health benefits. So the epigenetic, of course, balance your genetics. So we have certain genetic strengths, strengths and weaknesses from our parents, and but it's the epigenetic that is kind of the boss at the end of the day. It's my lifestyle, it's my mood, it's my uh, diet, it's you know, how I take things, how I cope with things. So that is um, really, 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 uh, there's no better diet than plant-based diet. And when World Health Organization said a few years ago, it's not sustainable with an animal-based diet for the future. So go plant-based, you can never go wrong. And I say, you know, people say it's like taking a, a leap in the unknown. I say take a leap in the known because <laughs> this institute is nearly 70 years old. And we've taken so many people through this and so many people have healed themselves through the lifestyle change that they did. And, you know, it's, um, it's amazing to see the possibilities. Progressive healing originating in ancient Greece emphasizes treating the mind, body, and spirit. Evolutionary medicine provides insights into why certain healing processes develop. So, you know, of course, Hippocrates is who we got our name from, but, you know, so many, and Egypt, of course, it's been for so many thousands of years used natural self-healing method with herbs and plants to help the body. Hormonal balance, so anti-inflammatory properties. Many plant-based foods are rich in antioxidants and have anti-inflammatory properties. Chronic inflammation is associated with the development of various types of cysts. For example, studies have shown that a diet high in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, which are key components of a plant-based diet, can reduce inflammation in the body. Hormonal balance. Certain types of cysts, like ovarian cysts, are influenced by hormonal imbalance. Plant-based diet positively affect hormone levels. Foods high in fiber, such as fruit, vegetables, and whole grains, help in regulating estrogen levels by facilitating its excretion from the body. So plant-based foods, you know, a plant to not, to, to not go extinct are mating phytochemicals. And phytochemicals help our brain help our bodies, help our whole immune system. So when studies were made, for example, about curcumin, they said, my gosh, where have this been? This is fantastic. So it's helping the plant not to go extinct and it's helping the plant to, to uh, fight off pathogens, but it helps us and especially helps us prevention of dementia and Alzheimer and Parkinson. Over the past few years, sperm count is declining, and one in six people have trouble conceiving. I mean, this is a big, big problem. So look at this. If you go back to 1951, a million semen, so if you took a million semen, that had 100 million sperms in it. Then they tested it 1970, and it was reduced 50%. They tested it in 1990, it was even more reduced. If it keeps going, they say by 2040, what's gonna be there? <laughs> so the, a big part of this is the lifestyle. A big part is the cell phones. We carry them in our pockets and the sperm count whoop, goes down. 
So stop wearing the cell phone in your pocket. It's not just for the sperm count. Maybe you already are a dad, but you know, it's for your testicles, for your prostate, for your liver, your kidneys, you name it, for your gut. Then you have uh, things that will help you, of course, our whole lifestyle. But one thing, all the essential fatty acids, the almonds, the walnuts, the pecan, the filbers, actually increase sperm count. So if you're trying to get pregnant, get your guy to eat much better. So here is Selma, and she will tell her story. Hi, my name is Selma. I came to Hippocrates 10 years ago. And when I came here, it was a time of burnout, depression, and a lot of sadness, as I had learned that I had ovarian cysts, and of course, that I had learned I couldn't have children. I have been going through Hippocrates for a 10-year journey, and the greatest thing about Hippocrates is that it feels like home. In that time, I've been able to have two beautiful children. They're the light of my life, and I 100% credit the family of people that are here, the support, and the love I've received from Hippocrates. Thank you. So Selma is just one of the examples having babies after being here. And, uh, you know, it's, of course, the most beautiful thing to be able to conceive, especially after you've tried everything. And a lot of people have even tried uh, fertility drugs and have, and have not worked and been able to conceive. So in recent Senate, hearing testimony, concerns were raised about the harmful trajectory we have permitted large corporations in the food and beverage in industry to follow. These companies have been enticing children to consume products laden with excessive amount of sugar, salt, and saturated fats, specifically formulated to encourage overeating. This issue has escalated to the point where the majority of children are now consuming an overabundance of overprocessed foods. This is a very bad start on a life that's growing, the brain that's growing, and the immune system that's growing. It's, it's a sad story. This picture I took at the Science Museum in London, and it said, he said his first word today, so mommy gave him something to rot his teeth away. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times we don't even think that this is a problem because this is what we did, right? The sugars we ate, the ice cream we ate, and the, the, the dental stuff that we had to deal with for the rest of our life, right? A lot of people don't even have teeth uh, by the time they reach 80, 90 years old. I mean, the teeth, they have a hard time to eat. For some people here, we have to blend the food because it's so hard to chew, especially raw food, um, when you don't have teeth. So it's very sad. And they know now that by the age of uh, five or six years old, um, half of kids have already tooth decay. I mean, this is nuts. So according to a recent study, sugar makes up over 